All right guys, today's episode, I finished the crane and the cab. So much work and I'm so happy. This thing is moving right along now. I'm over the hill. I'm over that spot that I know took a pile of time and you'll be happy to know I put a pile of time into this thing. Can't wait to show you, here we go. cab off again so we got our transmission mount so we can weld the cab mount solid and then we're gonna get on to putting the airlift on there with the sensors okay so on to the drive shaft I think we're gonna go with a two-piece on this one we got to figure out the way to get the cylinder actually working we can go back on the cab I got to somehow find 100 hours just for welding and then a couple hundred hours after that yeah for wiring and plumbing and all that fun stuff Okay, um, I'm gonna pull the intake off. I'm gonna get Vince to weld my injector nozzles shut. Um, there's tape underneath here yet, but uh, I'm gonna weld these completely shut, talking to uh, the guys from Holly, I'm trying to add nitrous. There is no adapter that fits in here, and we'd have to thread it, and then a bunch of stuff. It goes, just weld it solid, drill it, and tap it to the proper nozzle size, and that'll be the easiest way to go about it. So we're gonna do that, and clean that off, make sure that there's nothing living in here. And while we're at it, see if we can figure out our uh, fan belt at the same time. There we go. Vents well, mm. the uh, injector port's closed, so then we can drill and tap those for the nitrous. That looks really good, Vince. Welding okay? Yeah, it's sticking. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, good. it's going okay. Good. I'm not sure how deep they're going to come up a little bit. Way, so. Yeah, like three eighths of an inch. I just need a few threads. Oh. That's not that's not huge. Very good. But uh, but yeah, then we'll just flatten off the top yep. and then uh, beauty. Excellent. I got my drive shafts back from uh, Niagara Drive Line. Did a really nice job. Look at that nice weld on there. It's all balanced up. As a two piece, you do have to balance the two together. Already painted the one. Some uh, nice rust oleum. It's amazing what a little. Uh, a little spray can can do to uh, drive to anything. This is a really nice coat. So little splash of paint on this one. Let it dry. Should be brand spanking new. That dry, hit her again. Good. Okay, so we got this welded up real nice on our cylinder. Before I mount it though, I'm gonna strip all the paint off, let it get a little bit rusty, add a little bit of blue. Um, uh, but we gotta figure out the way to get the cylinder actually working. Just to clarify a couple things, we have a stinger on a retired tow truck at Tuesley's, um, but a stinger generally involves a giant lift that is able to go up and down. Now that, that takes hydraulic pressure, um, but we are after just the swivel part. So all I want is the swivel part that um, picks up the front two tires on a car, and I wanna make it so it slides into the frame and either gets bolted or pinned in place. So the hitch itself can't go up and down. Uh, we don't have the room for that mechanism because we've got the air ride system, we've got a fuel tank in the back, um, we've got air tanks, there's no room for this massive hydraulic system. We're not building a certified tow truck that is able to tow cars legitimately off the QEW or the 401. You will not see this truck on highway through hell with me and a rope cable. Now there's a few ways to get this hydraulic cylinder to work. The truck at the yard used a larger power steering pump reservoir and teed into the power steering reservoir. That works, it's not great. 
We can also go off the side of the Allison and somebody said, why don't you go off the Allison? Just like um, the transport truck, it's basically the same idea. You put a gear on here that um, you're able to uh, connect and disconnect and then have a pump with hoses and a separate reservoir. That would be nice, but again, we're not building a legitimate tow truck and that is a big cost. If you were to put a wrecker on it, I highly recommend going on the transmission side, you'd be in business for years and years. Um, our route, our cheapest route, is uh, to run to Princess Auto and pick up this nice Hydrotech um, portable hydraulic power unit. 12 volt going to it and uh, nice and cute. Look how cute that is. It's like, it's like a newborn baby. It's like, oh. Hey, beautiful. Sunsets are beautiful. Newborn babies are beautiful. The reason we went with this one is I can attach it right to the side like this. If you remember, I made this so that it was actually able to come out of the frame. So four bolts, that's a giant turret that slides into a round tube in this frame, and we can pull this entire thing off because I wanna be able to remove the stinger, slide it out of the back so we don't have this giant weight constantly being dragged around. And if I don't want this giant thing in the back, and maybe put like a really nice cafe racer or something in the back for a showpiece, we have that option. By putting this power pack on the side, I just take two wires, disconnect them or turn it or have a shut off on them so I can, I can disconnect the power to that. I can pull this off and I can even put this somewhere else. I can put a post by the corner of the, the door or something and still have a working uh, crane that um, is kind of neat. Now, um, somebody said, well, you can't lift a car with this. No, I understand that. We would pick up the front of the car or pull the, pull the rope nice and tight and then we would just push the button. The car would get lifted and come towards the truck as the boom goes up. And then once the front tires are over top of our stinger with our air suspension down, we can just lower the car onto there, strap it down, inflate the rear bags. We have our own little makeshift tow truck that's good for a laugh, looks cool, um, and keeps Frank Tuesley's memory kind of going because this is the tow rig out of Andrew Rose's grandfather who started Tuesday's Auto Wreckers. So um, let's get to it. We're gonna mount this. Now, the nice thing about it being so cute is we want it to stay rustic looking. I found this old Craftsman toolbox and lo and behold, it kind of fits in there minus this little thing right here. If it wasn't for this, so I have to drill a little hole here and put a little cap on there, weld it and we can mount the box nice and securely underneath here. I can get rid of the one handle so I can lift it all the way. Uh, I probably have to do that, um, but that's okay. We can disconnect the uh, swivel from the other side. It's a little bent on this side anyway. So anyway, let's get into it. Here we go. Guys, I got a hole cut for the knob in the front. I got to mark my holes at the bottom. So basically this side is tight to the outside of the box. So put your cardboard there. Use your hammer to find where the holes are. Punch them out. And I can line that up with the hole. That goes like that. And that's where I drill my holes. Easy. Okay, box is mounted. And uh, I went straight through the box to bolt into the um, pump, but unfortunately the box still swivels. You can see the box swivels, but the unit doesn't. So I got to build a little brace coming out, even just a little bit. It's a perfect job for vents tomorrow. Um, I was thinking about it. I can just move this in. I don't need it all the way out here. I got long arms. I got the side of the truck here. Go, go gadget arms. Oh yeah. I'll just kind of grab it there. Oh, that's fine. No problem. So I'll cut it back just a hair or quite a bit and try to punch this out and then slide that over. And that'll fix this bend thing too. Just knocking problems out of the park here, left and right. Oh, dang it. Oh, I didn't move far enough up. Well, that's fine. I can still. I can still grab it. Oh, I did not think about that. Oh, shoot. Well, that's like almost there. I want it tucked in as close as possible too, so we can still spin it, you know what I mean? It's no problem, because the handle will be right up to there anyway. It's fine, we meant to do that. 
It's no problem. It comes with a snazzy controller. That fits nicely right in there. Oh, you just, wait. Let me pop that off. Okay. Just need to go up, down. Ah, oh, so good. So good. That's so cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, so to get the red off of the lift cylinder, I just use the flapper disc, just the 80 grit to leave a rough texture behind. The flapper disc sometimes bounces and skips a little bit. That leaves behind red streaks. And I took a orbital and just smoothed those out a little bit, but still leaving some of the red behind. The lift cylinder itself has red on it and that will still match the red that's left behind. Now I did use teal paint, put that on our box and then sanded it down a little bit. Um, I also used that teal to put a little bit on the truck itself because the, if you go back in the videos, the box is actually off of a Dodge that we found in the scrapyard from VNR and it didn't 100% match so from five feet away I, it looks good because I took some of that kind of tealish paint and put it on the doors of the cab and a little bit on the box I put a little bit on the boom um, this hasn't been outside the weather at all and the rest of the teal I'm going to put on here just uh, run some streaks on it keep it light but this will rest the same color as that and then a little bit of teal behind it we'll hit that with some sandpaper before we linseed oil it and keep it that way now the cylinder's done I can finish up the boom I already pulled the rope off now I can slide the extension out and we can take this clamp off and we can lay this flat. I'm gonna get Vince to weld it solid and I'm gonna see if I have some big wrenches that fit around this bar and we can weld that wrench kind of in between this and this. I don't know why this is here, but we better not cover that up. Or was that, no, oh, that was the old pivot. I can weld that right up through. I'm gonna weld it, cover up that hole, put the wrench there and then uh, we're good. Was that the old pivot? I think it was. Yeah, it was. There's a big washer here. There must have been a pivot on there. So I decided to change that um, and do it on the spar for some reason. Now I just got to make sure it doesn't come off. Vince, I need you. Okay, so we got to weld this uh, this bar on the boom properly. Um, the welds on the lift were pretty sketchy. Huh? Like, there we go, but they've held for 75 years. They'll probably be fine. Um, I welded a couple beads on here originally with the welder. Vince is gonna touch it up. He's gonna complete the weld here. And then originally I thought I could get it like a wrench and put a box end wrench around it and weld the wrench to here. But it's not really a rat rod build. It's, it's um, it would be the only rat roddy thing on it. And I don't wanna start doing all that. The interior is really nice. So instead I just took some plate, uh, put a two inch hole saw through there. We put that in there. That doesn't interfere with the pivot point underneath. We can weld that on the side here and on the top. And then it, the boom can't be pushed, pulled or, or slide on it. Uh, just one more uh, bead that we can put on there. And then once that's done, we can uh, pop the boom back on it again. So. Looks so nice. I was thinking about putting a plate on the back, but I don't think it's necessary, is it? Probably didn't too, right? Put that. It's like fit in there. Ah, just a plate, just to tie it that through. Would just make it look better, but okay. I don't can't think see it. Nah. Okay, so the plate to hold. So basically, there's this plate that bolts to the center section, which goes straight down. You push from lifting up. Three of the four bolts are broken. I got lucky on the first one. I'll weld the nut to it and see if I can spin it up.
do off camera where it's perfect. Okay, got it. I had to drill it out and tap it, but I don't. Threads are okay. No issues with that. So, yeah, that took a long time. Camera died. You know how it goes. But anyway, we got some threads. Throw this on there. Grease fitting works. We're all set. Mm -hmm. first. And then it should lay on that plumber. for some hoses and actually I put the plugs back in again and just left this in with air and it didn't sink at all so that's a good little cylinder there um, because air is easier to bypass seals than hydraulic oil but anyway run the VNR these are the fittings that we need we'll run grab a four of those and a couple hoses make the hinge point right down here and then um, the length of hose shouldn't really change so it should be fairly accurate on my length of hose. Here we go. figured out. I just marked them where I want to cut them. I left them long. Nice and neat inside the box. We'll run some hydro. Hydro in there. Hydraulic oil. And she'll be working. Fantastic. Nice. Here we go. All right, so pretty well finished up on the crane part for now. I replaced all the bolts with grade eight. I uh, had to go through a couple different stores in town to be able to find it. Um, but in doing so, I was able to get my hoses crimped at VNR, and they look really good, and they are part of the, um, the whole mechanism. So the whole uh, pump and the hoses all spin with the crane, which is perfect. The problem is the electricity doesn't. So we need to hook it up basically to a battery, and we're pulling about 230 amps when we actually uh, have a load on it. So I thought about coming through the middle of the turret and then running down because then that's the least amount of spinning that I can do. But if you forget and you go around or somebody else borrows it and goes around too many times, it'll twist the cable, it'll chafe, it'll cut, and that's all bad. So I thought coming through the front, coming underneath so you can, you can look at it, but I also wanna be able to remove the turret. So the quickest and easiest way to do that is just to get like a forklift, uh, electric forklift connector. Um, and then basically if you want to spin it around and the cord doesn't reach, you just unplug it, spin it, and plug it right back in again. If we're pulling it out, then just unplug it and away you go. The connector on the forklift is, is shielded, so it's not an issue. And then we can have a, a master on off uh, just to keep it safe because we don't want anything shorting out. So while I order that, we can go back on the cab um, and that's how the project goes. Order some parts, uh, work on something until you run out of parts, you got to order it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get on the cab and then I'm excited to put the cab back on the frame. So here we go. Okay, the cab on the C10 still needs some work. I got a gap here. This gap, since I can stick my finger in there, you know how I like my gaps. 
That's a problem. And that's because we actually moved this whole firewall back a little bit and I'm hitting up against my factory floorboard here. So um, I can do a couple things. I can pull this off and put this bend farther back and sink this in because I'm tight at the top. I just need to shrink the whole thing that way. It wouldn't be that important. I could squeeze this together and kind of do whatever. Um, but it's not the GTO, but um, I need this space because the exhaust is right here and she's pretty tight. So um, I'm going to probably take this piece off. I'm gonna pull the brake back off again. The hydro boost, pull my wheelbarrow back off, make a mark and just try to suck this in a bit or bend this lip a little farther back. I'm not sure which, but I can mark it. I can drill all the holes so I can spot weld it, drill all the holes in the wheelbarrow so we can spot weld that, seam seal this, and maybe paint the firewall. Probably paint the firewall nice one color. So when you pop the hood, you got a nice shiny engine with some nice, uh, new parts on it. So uh, we'll drill, drill up the rivets first and then take that off and basically take stuff all apart again. Here we go. Whoa. That was load bearing. Okay, so I marked where the line should be. Um, and you can see I'm like an inch and a half too far. So to fix that, I do need a lip here because that adds strength. If we just butt it, it'll kink and whatever. So I need to fold this over and then spot weld them together. And that'll give me some good strength and it'll seam seal the top and the bottom. So to do that, I'm just gonna C-clamp these bars, top and bottom, underneath where I want the line. And then just take a big hammer and beat the snot out of the floor until I curl it over where I'm happy and then try to put this uh, back up again. We'll weld that, we'll do drill all the holes, the spot weld everything, fix everything that needs to be fixed and um, that'll make it work. Now, most people think body work is like rubbing the side of a, a panel and feeling a thousandth of an inch imperfection to get that mirror finish. Most of the body work is just grabbing a big hammer or a two by four and prying and pushing and beating it <laughs> until the metal does what you want it to do. <laughs> and uh, that mirror finish is, uh, is, 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 is dream. It's a dream. <laughs> but um, I, I, I kid, the GTO is nice and straight. The Bronco is nice and straight and it does have that. But when you're doing a nice patina build like that, um, you can be a little bit rougher and not care as much. So here we go. Okay, by using the screw holes, you can put them back in the same spot that uh, you started with. I got that nice and tight now. There's no gap. And pinch it to the bottom. We've got a nice seam here. So that's not bad. We'll pinch that together as we weld it. But now I'll trim the top and drill the holes and did my test fit. We should be good. Right, here we go. Okay, so this bracket, I had to raise it up to avoid the uh, steering column from hitting the exhaust. So um, I just put a little filler plate in between there. I cut it, cut the angle, spot welded it to the bottom, welded around the outside, welded my bracket for the brake master cylinder off to the side. So it's part of this bracket. And then this actually gets attached to this little bracket right here. So before I do that, I just gotta grind those welds back off again. But now I'm ready to, I trimmed the outside, put all my holes in there to spot weld everything. So we're in good shape to uh, weld it. I need to just drill some holes right here yet. And then that's it. Then the floor will be done. And then we can do it all again with the other side. Okay, so that's kind of what we started out with and to the internet world, that's done. But in reality, this is done. So 
whole bunch of spot welds. You got a steering and brake all set up over here. We got a thousand little spot welds to put everything together. We got a nice tight gap so that water's not gonna run in. And that's the difference between reality and TV. <laughs> so um, it's been like that for a while, but now I have to do all of that to that side. It'll be a little easier because I don't have to worry about the brake in that. I, I've had a lot of comments and stuff too. It's like, oh, it's a nice truck. You should paint it and make it look 100%. Well, one, it's a tow truck. Kind of want to have fun with it. We're going to haul some stuff with it. It's got a crane in the back. And if we did that, then we'd have to do things like making sure that this is the right angle because the floor does kind of go up a little bit. Um, but I'm not sure if this is the right angle or not. I am supporting the cab off of two tiny little hooks from Princess Auto and, and they started to bend because they were never, they were intended to hold like eight pounds and they're holding 800 pounds. So kudos to those, those hooks for trying to hold on. So I, I did take the weight off the cab, but the floor could change a little bit, right? Now, if the floor went up, that's no big deal. I got more clearance for the exhaust and everything underneath. Um, and if it went down, then I've got more clearance for the exhaust over here. But if it's more than likely, because it was sitting on the stand here, um, the floor was folding up, means that the, the cab essentially is a little lower now. Um, but that's not a big deal. Then we can just shim on top of our uh, cab mounts and raise it up. Either way, I'm not worried. Um, I'm going to weld that side. And that is the theme of this truck. We will sand down the, uh, just the spots on the weld where it sticks out just a hair. Like you can see how it's just raised a little bit. I'll hit that with a grinder and then we're just gonna splash some paint on it, put a fire shield on that so that um, the exhaust and the fumes and the heat stays in the engine compartment. And then that's good enough. Um, that is this project. A lot of fun, a lot of making stuff work. And it's not the GTO and it's not the Bronco. If it was those projects, I would go about this completely different. I would check my gaps on the door and check all that a thousand times before we finished. But this is a fun project this way where we can do things like this in a timely manner and then spend time on the air ride and the crane getting that working in the back and putting the twin uh, dual plenum and the twin turbos on that. All that fun stuff. But at the end of the day, it's a nice patina truck. The interior is going to be quiet still, nice and neat, but it's picking your battles and, and figuring out you're, you're budgeting your time more or less and trying to get the project going. So I wasn't looking forward to this because I knew it was going to take some time. But uh, now that we're halfway there, it's not so bad. And I'm excited because once this cab is finished, we can bolt that down for the last time. So enough yapping. Let's do the other side. Here we go. She is. Um, you can see how much extra work it actually is to make this thing a legit uh, vehicle going safe down the road. Um, lots of spot welds, lots of banging and twisting and butt welding, trying to uh, uh, make everything fit together and stay together. So I got a little bit left to do. Just this little corner right here. I got to fill that in and then we'll have to make a transmission tunnel. But Looking at it now, um, you can see how much work I actually did. I had to weld in all those little patches underneath there. The rockers, which I still have to do the outside rockers, but I'm, like, I had them in there, but the door didn't close quite right. So instead of welding them solid, I want to bolt it down to the frame and then I'll weld those in. Um, but yeah, you can see all the, the hundreds of hours it takes to weld this in. So. That was one of the big deterrents because um, I knew I had to do all this work. Uh, about 100 hours worth of welding uh, between the floor 
the box and everything else yet. That's not including the step bars that I want to make or the panels down below, but it's hard to make a video on that because it's just time consuming and I run into stuff like that when I go into the projects. Then I realize, wow, I gotta find, I gotta somehow find 100 hours just for welding and then a couple hundred hours after that yet yeah, for wiring and plumbing and all that fun stuff. So I pushed it aside and went on the F-350 and had it going down the road first. So um, yeah, we're gonna keep going on, but uh, just a little taste of that little time lapse. It probably took a few minutes. Yeah, 50, 60 hours of welding. <laughs> so here we go. So that fan is probably one of the best investments in this room. Awesome ventilation. Um, but yeah, we've got that painted. And a lot of people would take a long time to make this perfect, but we're just gonna cover this up with sound deadening and heat shielding when it's dry anyway. So um, we don't have to worry about that. From here, we're going to do a little bit more work underneath and then we're all set. I'm very happy with how that turned out. Here we go. Because the front is pretty well taken care of and I'm happy with the mounts in the back here. I just took 3 16 plate and put it over my mount that went there. Um, the piece going to the rockers is pretty rotten, so I'm going to replace that, but I got to put the outer rocker on before I can weld that solid to the inner rocker because I don't want to have it sticking out at all. So both of these welded really nice in here, put a nice plate on there to go to the bar at the back. Still got some issues on the back here, but uh, I think what I can do rather than put it back on the frame is um, put a 2x4 along the bottom where the mounts would be and even bolt the mount to it and then that would be the same as it's sitting on the frame so i'm not too worried about it changing shape or doing anything silly and then i can do the same for the front so the front mounts i'll just do a two by four on the front and then if it's sitting on the cab mounts then we can do the uh outer rockers and then that's it for the cab uh, i'm gonna weld this tight to this and then seam seal the whole inside and then that's gonna have to do here we go Okay, so I don't want to alarm you guys, but if you see this scuff mark, the door was hitting this and it did not want to close at all, even though everything else fit really nice. Like, already, you can't even see where I want this piece to that piece, other than this line here. But I, I think these panels were the right ones, but I bought these panels like four years ago. I think Summit gave us these panels. So, I can't really go back to warranty and we're probably gonna lose a shot because the, the door doesn't close at all, which is why I took them off in the first place. But what I did was I basically just cut a three quarter inch strip out of the door and then just angled this up because the bottom gap was good. It was, this was hitting the inner or the outer rocker. So that adds like an hour per door. But because we were able to come up with solutions and if you're wondering why, we're not gonna fix stuff like this. It's fine, and a big giant hunk of steel in there that's holding this, it's not really a crucial part. It's, it's fine. We'll weld this back together again. Spot rivets and that are still, I was able to come through the side here, re-weld, take a little chunk out of that bracket, weld that up. I think the GoPro timed out, sorry about that. But uh, we'll probably have to do the same to the other side. But we'll just weld the seam shut again, grind it, and then finish welding the rockers, and then one side is all done. Here we go. Okay, so this is the other door. It's coming along really nice. Other than this little piece here is rotten, so I think I'm gonna replace that piece. I can get this little fold in there, take care of that. In the meantime, I'll hang it, make sure that I clear the other uh, rocker, spun the cab around, now I'm facing that way, passenger side, make sure that all my passengers are happy, and then we can start silicone. There we go. Okay, so I've painted all my wells, trying to get paint in there. But now we're gonna hit it with some seam sealer. So every gap, we're gonna try and fill that in. It doesn't have to be super pretty because we're covering this all up with sound and heat shield. So here we go. Okay, so the 
the back of the cab wasn't really attached to the floor. There was a gap here, so I pinched these all nice and tight, spot welded it, and then ran a bunch of uh, little stitches everywhere where it was kind of clean and welded that back together. I'll seam seal that. I have one little patch to make right here yet. I gotta do something with the cab corners yet, um, but I'm doing that while this is drying. I'm happy with how this turned out. Um, I'm very much a fan of having the top half of my truck attached to the bottom half of my truck. So I'll trim these off, um, not that anybody's ever going to see it, but um, yeah, we'll close up the cab corners and that's it. Then the cab is done. And we'll put, then, then we'll get the sound and heat shielding. It, it never ends. But anyway, here we go. Okay, so the cab's all together. Now, next before we put the cab back on again there's one more thing we got to address and that's the fact that the exhaust comes right off the engine along the front floorboard it goes underneath the floor and then comes up behind the cab in the form of stack so i've got heat on three sides of this cab so to protect us as best as we can um she's gonna get hot uh we're gonna use dei's uh, floor and tunnel shield this is aluminum with fiberglass on the back um, and it's good for 1750 degrees. So um, it's also super thin. It's got a, a adhesive backing on it. That's exactly what I need for my floorboard to try and keep those temperatures out as best as we can. I do have an electric uh, AC compressor that I'm going to see if I can try and make work. But uh, we won't have air conditioning for the first little bit because as everybody knows, it's the last thing on every project to get working. The GTO I finished, I finished building that four years ago. I just got the AC going last summer. So everything's painted underneath i scraped off all of the tar where the muffler is underneath the cab but i left the tar under the main section so i'm probably just going to put some under oiling right over top of that there's nothing wrong with that that floor looks good um and then uh yeah so um let's uh lay this stuff in place and go from there Guys, I'm gonna try something a little different for the inside here. It is extremely sticky. So once it's on there, boy, she's on there. So what I'm gonna do is because I need it to stick to the back here and kind of fold around here, um, I've got it wider than I need to, but it's just long enough. So what I did was I cut a 17 inch strip of the glue of the protective covering out of the center. That way I could push that to the back of that and not have the side stick. And then I can try and peel that off afterwards and then trim it to match the other side. It, it might work. Probably won't work. But we're going to try. Easy peasy. Here we go. So for the inside, we're using DEI's vibration dampening mat. Um, that's for noise and heat, and uh, really nice stuff to work with. Just peel the backing off, it's very adhesive, and you're able to conform to the floor relatively easy. We've got some pretty sharp bends on the floor of the C10, but it, it uh, works really well. If it doesn't, cut a little slit in there if you can't stretch it enough, but uh, really, really nice to work with. So we're gonna put this on the floor, we're gonna put this on the back of the cab, and then also right up onto the firewall inside and on the inside of the doors as well. Here we go. few wrinkles it actually helps the sound even more which is not as pretty so maybe on camera I'll try and do it nice and tight and then when the camera's off I'm gonna leave a bunch of wrinkles because that actually helps with the sound <laughs> corners 
all done, I just bang that out of a little piece of tin, but uh, finished. Finished, finished, finished. I knew it was gonna take this long. I was hoping it wouldn't, but a lot of welding in the cab. I said I had between 100 and 120 hours of welding to do. I've got about 80 of those hours taken care of. We gotta do a little bit of welding in the box, but um, the cab is pretty well ready to go back on the frame. Next video though, before we do that, I'm gonna finish up everything underneath. We've gotta change those fuel lines, hook up the air ride system properly. Uh, get the plumbing and everything figured out and the fan belt for the engine and then we'll plunk the the cab back on it again and weld the box sides on for the last time so excited uh about all the progress that uh we've been doing on this i'm over the hill i'm seeing the end of it um and i'm very very excited for that so you can check this out at motorama 2023 at uh, the international center on march 10th 11th and 12th we'll be there the truck will be there um, hopefully it's not SEMA ready. My goal is to be able to drive it in. We're definitely going to trailer it because we won't be able to get the safety and all that done in time, but we will hopefully drive it in and you can check it out in person. We'll sell some merch. We'll, uh, I got some poster signings. Um, so, and there's uh, a bunch of other uh, celebrities and stuff there too. So thanks for watching guys. Um, remember, get out there and work on it because the satisfaction is like nothing you've ever seen when you've spent years on it and thinking about it and focusing on it and, and you're almost there. It's a great feeling. Here we go.